Who's better, Trevor Zegris or Jack Hughes? More to talk about on today's episode of Locked On Devils featuring Locked On Ducks. Your Locked On Devils, your daily podcast on the New Jersey Devils. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, this is Bryce Salvador, and you're Locked On Devils with Trey Matthews. All righty now, what is up, New Jersey and also Anaheim? Welcome back to the Locked On Devils and the Locked On Ducks podcast here on the Locked On Network. I'm your host, Trey Matthews. He is J.D. Hern- Wait, there we go. Other way, JD- other way. <laughs> I always make this mistake, bro. He is J.D. Hernandez of Locked On Ducks, and it is a battle of the young guns. So I'm going to be representing Jack Hughes, and he's going to be representing Trevor Zegres. The yeah. battle of the... The Battle of the Bromance. So, <laughs> JD, how the, before we get into the discussion, how are the Ducks looking? They're looking at all the Devils. <laughs> in, in that they're slowly on the rise. They will be better than last season. Playoffs, not so sure, but hey, they have some exciting young players. I'd say the Devils, our ceiling is wild card, but... Everything has to go correctly. It's going to depend on if Jack Hughes can stay healthy. Uh, you know, can Andre Palat have a career year? Mm-hmm. Uh, we do have some exciting prospects, including Alexander Holtz, who is uh, probably going to get a role on the top six. Our goaltending yeah. has gotten better with Mackenzie Blackwood and Vitek Vanacek. But, the, okay, so just to, um, you know, catch everybody up, the reason I reached out to J.D. Hernandez of Locked on Ducks <laughs> I've actually been talking about this for like a month or so saying, okay, you know what? We're going to do a crossover and we're going to talk about Jack Hughes versus Trevor Zegras because somebody, a former locked on host called me out on Twitter and said that I was for better terms, effing insane for saying that Jack Hughes uh, is better than Trevor Zegras or saying like Trevor Zegras wishes he was Jack Hughes. Because remember you, you, you tweeted something out saying like, um, why is Jack Hughes paying for Trevor Zegras's uh, breakfast or whatever the case might be? And because, you know, Trevor Zegras was, I think at the time, recently named the cover athlete for the new NHL video game, along with Sarah Nurse. So mm-hmm. I personally like the cover. I think it's, uh, I think it's <clears throat> something different, something unique. And you yeah, know, you, you of- know why Hughes is paying for everything right now? Because he got that contract already. Zegras will get it after this season. So maybe next year Z will start paying for stuff. But for right now, Hughes is making a little bit more money. Although yeah, I yeah. I can see Zegras trying to one up Hughes, the next contract that's available. I could see Zegras saying, "You know what? He's making eight million. I want nine million, and the Ducks would give him that." I could see the one sure up. Spin- Heck yeah, one's up. One upsmanship is definitely in play here. So I could see Z making. You know, this was actually a topic on a recent episode of Locked On Ducks where I talked about how much Z should be paid after this season. And we were kind of toying around with maybe 8.59 million. And honestly, if Zegris has another stellar season, I could see him getting that $9 million contract because the Ducks will also have cap space. The Ducks have all the cap space in the world right now. And there's, there's a certain former duck that's going off the books next season some guy you may have heard of him he's been in three consecutive stanley cup finals and lost three consecutive stanley cup finals (laughs) that guy Corey perry he's finally off the books after next season the worm not dennis rodman the worm Corey perry the worm there's your there's your nba reference but yeah yeah okay the Corey perry money goes off So money will be available. All right. The worm will be off the books, everybody. Now, JD, I got to ask you this before we get into it. So Jack Hughes and Trevor Zegras both have the same rating in the EA Sports video game shell. Last season, Hughes, 56 points, almost had the same amount of points as Zegras, 61, in 26 less games. There's levels to this EA Sports. Be better. Uh, So why? Okay. I gotta ask you this: Why are they rated the same 
when Jack Hughes was the better player in 26. Oh, my game. God. We're going to do this. All right. First yes. off, Zegris got that many points in spite of being benched earlier in the season by Dallas Eakins. There were a few games where Zegris didn't play that many minutes because he was getting benched for whatever reason. It was only towards maybe middle and end where Z was finally let loose and started scoring goals at will. So those points are in spite of that. Also, you got to keep in mind that the Anaheim Ducks, not exactly a juggernaut on offense. Z had to carry that team for about a month. And also, you got to think about, it wasn't just Trevor Zegra scoring goals. There was another guy that was up and coming for the Ducks. Some guy by the name of Troy Vetchkin, as a former colleague that you may have alluded to earlier, mentioned. Yeah, she calls him Troy Vetchkin. But Troy Terry had a breakout season. And gee, if only Zegris and Terry were on the same line. Urgh. That would have been shoulda, fun. Shoulda, woulda, coulda, dinda, though. Will be, though. Will be. Okay. 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 But let me tell you this about mm -hmm. Jack Hughes. Okay, here we go. Jack Hughes is so adaptable. Like, he can make anybody around him better. And he's proving it once again during the course of this preseason because Alexander Holtz, a player who only suited up in like nine or so games for the Devils last season, is now projected to be a top six player. Yeah. And, and who was he paired alongside with? He was paired alongside with Andre Pilat and Jack Hughes. And that line is now called the H2O line. And if you want to go a little further during, yeah, so like Hughes, Holtz, and then Andre. So, but if you want to go back a little further to the 2021 uh, 56 uh, COVID season, Jack Hughes was paired with Yanni Kwokinen and also Yegor Sharangovich. And we, I, uh, I was, poor Jack. Uh, yes, poor Jack. Exactly. Exactly. Poor, poor Jack Hughes. But, he was able to make the most of it because uh, Yanni Kwokinen was somewhat solid. And then Yegor Sharangovich was one of the more exciting players for the Devils that year because I don't think anyone was anticipating for Yegor Sharangovich to be the player that he was coming out of preseason, and he was electrifying. So that was called the kid line. And then going into the next season, that was obviously the top line the Devils were going to roll with because Yanni Kwokinen, Yegor Sharangovich, and Jack Hughes worked so well together. What mm -hmm. happened? What went wrong with that line? Jack Hughes gets hurt second game of the year against the Seattle Kraken. He is out for a significant amount of time. Then what happens to Yegor Sharangovich and Yanni Kwokinen? They go down. So Yegor Sharangovich and Yanni Kwokinen both became healthy scratches a couple times. And now where's Kwokinen right now? He's overseas. Where's Sharangovich right now? While in discussion to have solid production, we don't really talk about Sharangovich being a vital part of uh, being, uh, you know, up there in points for the Devils this season. So when you talk about Zgres not being paired with the right amount of guys, I'm just saying, like, someone like Jack Hughes, he's able to make it work, and it doesn't matter who he's paired alongside with. He is, like, the engine that makes the New Jersey Devils run, and he makes the players around him better, as proven with Alexander Holtz, Yegor Sharangovich, and Yanni Kwokinen. All right, you done? Because <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go now. So conversely, think about who he was paired up with. I'm talking about Zegras. Zegras had a good thing going with a certain player that is now on maybe the outs in the NHL. A guy by the name of Frank Milano or Sonny Milano. Think about how those two paired up. Zegras, you want to talk about a guy making other players better. Zegras is that guy for the Ducks. Zegras gave Sonny Milano his career season last year with the Ducks. If it wasn't for Trevor Zegras, Milano would not have gotten that many points. And for some reason, now that you take out Zegras from that pairing, Milano struggled that last month of the season when Dallas Eakins was shuffling around lines. And you want to talk about a pairing that just had an amazing thing going. I mean, think about the flying Z goal. Do I need to go any further then the flying Z goal that took place at Buffalo, New York. That took an amazing amount of coordination. If Trevor Zegras can make anybody better, including said Milano, then that's nothing but a good thing for the Ducks. And that's when they were rolling. It wasn't until maybe March, like I said, Sonny Milano just kind of fell off a little bit, which is why Sonny Milano did not sign with anybody and he go. And that was it. So 
what's wrong with Sonny Milano, some people are saying. Look, he's not making a big impression in Calgary right now. And that's unfortunate because he probably misses his buddy. Having somebody just pass it along with definite ease to everyone else. And when you saw Zegris on the line with Troy Terry those few times, that's when Troy Terry's goals began to pick up as well. Zegris is a playmaking type player. Vincente Milano having the most points in his career. Last Sunday, Milano was mired in the minor leagues to Cleveland with the Monsters. And he did win a Calder Cup with the Monsters, sure. Columbus, he struggled to find points. Career high in the NHL, 30 or goals. Career highs for Zegris this coming year. You're going to see the Z pairing. And I even said, Terry could get 40 goals this season. He definitely could. Okay, okay. So you made your case for playmaking. But I just want to I just want to say this. When Jack Hughes went down mm-hmm. with the injury second game of the year, what happened to the New Jersey Devils? Their production went way down. Like, it wasn't even funny. To the point where going into Christmas break, we were on like a six-game losing streak. But then when Jack Hughes comes back, there's just a new surgence amongst the organization. Like the Mm -hmm. Devils started becoming uh, more consistent on the offensive side of things. And then uh, they they just caught lightning in a bottle. And I would arguably say they were one of the more exciting offenses to watch in the entire league. Now, they couldn't guard anyone, but we're not talking about defense here. We're talking about the (laughs) offensive production from Mr. (laughs) Mr. Jack Hughes. But, um, you know, overall, it's just like um, when, when Jack Hughes returned to injury, the Devils just got so much better. At one point, Yegor Sharangovich was able to get back to what he once was last year, and that was, you know, mm-hmm. uh, due to Jack Hughes returning. And then uh, Jack Hughes became, like, player of the week due to uh, him, like, you know, beating some top-notch teams, including, I believe, the Edmonton Oilers at one point late in December, or, it, or, or if it was early January. I forget. These games mesh together. But overall, it's just, like, the point is Jack Hughes – Without him, the engine does not run for New Jersey Devils, and they are a bottom-tier team. But with him coming back, they are a fringe, fringe. I, I can't reiterate this enough. They are a fringe wild card team. I felt, I feel as though if Jack, and this might be a hot take, if Jack Hughes was healthy because he only suited up in 49 games this year, if he would have appeared in like mm-hmm. 70 to 75 games, Okay. I think we'd be talking about the New Jersey Devils possibly either making the wild card or being relatively close. Oh, 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 you're going to drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You drink your water, buddy. You drink your water. I know what you're trying to do, and I'm not falling for it. I'm not mm-hmm. I'm not going to fall for your little uh, malarkey there. Now, um, <laughs> so any, anyway, as I was saying, yes, J- I think Jack Hughes, if he played in more games, then quite honestly, I think the New Jersey Devils would have been in, like a fringe wild card team. That's that's what I say. And I talked to a betting es- expert. I talked to Jackson Bond of Paramount okay. uh, Sports, and he mm-hmm. said the best bet for the New Jersey Devils this year is to place your bets on Jack Hughes to possibly win uh, the Hart Trophy, just because he could Ooh. have a. Ta- oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Bear with me. He can have a Taylor Hall type of year. Just because, like, remember when Taylor Hall was on the Devils? He didn't eclipse 100 points, but the Devils got, were, like, a surprise. And I feel as though if Jack Hughes stays healthy, if he gets to 100 points, if the Devils are a wild card team, could he win it? I don't know. But I think he would be in the running for the Hart Trophy. That, and that's a betting expert telling me, like, you know, if you want to place your bet on a New Jersey Devils outcome whether it's lindy ruff getting fired whether it's the devils making the playoffs your best bet is to go in on jack hughes possibly winning the heart trophy well i think it would also be on bet online by the way that's yes. ah yes it would be on, I, it would be on bet online i mean should we go with that segue now because we gotta talk about bet online for a hot minute right because Please remember bet on, to gamble responsibly, people. Yeah, bet responsibly. Do not bet on the Phoenix Coyotes. But Bet Online is your first source for all sports betting. You know, hockey's coming up, basketball's coming up, 
football week four, week five, and baseball comes to a close. So to find all the latest player developments, including a Zegris and a Hughes, team matchups, podcasts, news, in-depth articles, and analysis on every game you can find, Bet Online remains your continued source for all your sport wagering information. With up-to-the-minute scores for every sport out there, and you can also check out MLB, MMA, boxing, and even golf. So where should they head to, Trey? BetOnline.net. Please remember to gamble responsibly and visit our friends at Locked On Bets for all your betting needs there as well. Bet Online is where the game starts, and Bet Online is the official online sportsbook of the Locked On Podcast Network. Gamble responsibly, folks. Do not bet on the Coyotes this season. Do not bet on the Blackhawks this season. Don't do it. Bet responsibly. You could bet on the Devils. Actually, you know what? I'll, I'll make this bet. You could take the over on both the Devils and the Ducks on the points pro- projections because they were pretty low for both of our teams. Yes, they like that is something I think we can agree on. I just yeah. okay, look, I know okay, so during the course of the offseason, the Devils were swinging for the fences. We were aiming for Johnny Goodrow, Kevin Fiala, Alex DeBrinket, Matthew Kachuk. I think that by default the Devils did get better during the course of the offseason. You know, we got Andre Pilat, we got Marina, we got Brendan Smith, we got Vitek Vanacek. Uh we were able to get uh uh Shimon Nemetz from the draft. And that I wasn't that, a bad pick. That was not a bad pick because here's the thing. You draft what you need. You don't draft the best player available unless you're the first overall pick. Ah, see. Well, because the thing is, if we would have well, drafted. Maybe, maybe in your case, that's true. true. Yes, because if you would have, because if we would have drafted Logan Cooley or Shane Wright, it doesn't make sense because uh, we got Nico Heischer. We obviously got Jack Hughes. We got Dawson Mercer. Uh, we have it's, a lot. It's of really it's those first two guys that you mentioned right there, which is why you make that pick, right? And you and you get another defenseman to develop alongside with Luke Hughes. Hmm. Yeah. So I I did not hate the pick, but you know, going back to the points, I I could see a world where the Ducks could make a wild card. I think that is the Ducks' ceiling as well, the same as the Devils possibly making a wild card but that also depends on that other division the central division i'm gonna be honest i don't see the ducks overtaking the oilers the flame the kings in the division it's going to depend on the wild card and it's going to depend on the central division it's going to depend on the winnipeg jets of the world it's going to depend on maybe not the blues but the stars of the world it's going to depend on those teams and see how they do. And it's also going to depend on how poorly the other teams in the Central play. I mentioned the Blackhawks and the Cowdies being two of them. How poorly are those teams going to fall in the standings? And how much could it pump up the points for other certain teams? So it all depends. But um, I think if all goes well, and like I said, the offense is going to come at the hands of Mr. Jack Hughes. Uh, I, I think the Devils have a legitimate chance, but that's best case scenario. We need our goaltending to be good. We need. Uh, yeah, that's team. that's your question mark right there, buddy. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Uh, the Devils have actually been doing pretty well. And I know it's preseason, and I know we don't want to like read too far into it, but the Devils have actually been doing somewhat decent in the goaltending department during the course of preseason. So right. I just. So, you know, I just want to point this out. I said it in my latest episode, according to Bill Spaulding, who is the new play-by-play voice for New Jersey Devils. He tweeted out and said, safe to say the Devils have gotten better than average goaltending this preseason. Defensive structure was mostly good again today, too. That's just six goals against in five preseason games. So, the reason the reason we haven't heard a whole lot about goaltending for the Ducks is because the guys that they've sent out during the preseason, has been guys that are going to wind up in San Diego. Ole Eriksson, and Lukas Dostal. Finally, on Tuesday night, there's going to be Anthony Stolarz, finally. Gibby against the Kings, well, that that's a whole other thing. The Kings love playing against John Gibson, so that that's kind of tough to evaluate. But it's really going to come down to maybe Saturday's game. 
to evaluate the goaltending for the Ducks. Just because they haven't played any of their main guys. Like, the Ducks are set in their goaltending. John Gibson, Anthony Stolarz, who we haven't really seen. We, we haven't. So but that's, that's... Yeah, go ahead. We don't want to get... See, you don't want to, like, overestimate, but you don't want to underestimate preseason either. That's the thing. So I'm just trying to be somewhat conservative about it. I'm being super conservative just because the Ducks really haven't played all their guys yet. We're, we're not really going to see what the team's going to look like until Saturday's game at Staples Center on Saturday. Uh, it's called Crypto.com. No, 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 no. You cannot do that to me. No, 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 no. It, it's the truth. It's called crypto. Everybody, nobody in SoCal calls it crypto.com arena it's not Center anymore. It's oh no 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 okay la is a lot like chicago in that sense when the names change they do not call it the new name they call it the old name okay it is still sears tower it is still staples center okay for about 10 years no one called it edison international field no it was the Big A in Anaheim or Angel Stadium. No one called it Ederson International. It was. It's the Big A. It's the Big A, folks. That's where the Angels play. It's the Pond. That's where the Ducks play. I still hear going to the Pond or the Ponda. Crypto.com Arena. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. Hey, hey, the one thing we can't agree, JD, before we get back into our discussion, uh, I, I, I love the Lakers, so L.A., I, I, I do love my I, – I do. Always so we can, At least we can agree on that on that regard. We, we, can, we can definitely agree on that. I mean, this isn't basketball talk, but after seeing their last preseason game, my hopes have dwindled a little, a little don't bit. Don't worry about that. It's preseason. It's preseason. Don't overestimate. Don't underestimate. It's preseason. It's just they're, they're rusty. Now, let's get back into the discussion for Jack Hughes and Trevor Zegras. Yes. I, okay. Okay. I, I don't want to disrespect Trevor Zegras in any sort of way. But you're going to. I'm not going to. But Okay, I'm just, good. I'm just like, I, I'm not going to slander him. He's a good player. And oh, plus, he's a great If I had to pick one or the other, if, if, oh. in my unbiased opinion, it's Jack Hughes. Now, here's, here's why. You know, okay. Trevor Zegras suited up in 75 games, 75 out of 82 games. Now, you did say because he wasn't really getting the minutes he deserved early on. So he registered 61 points. But the fact of the matter is this. So, like, you know, if we're comparing, you know, the first two years in the league, uh, you know, I think I think Trevor Zegras does have that edge a little bit because it did take Jack Hughes a minute to, to you know, come into fruition. So, because, you know, I was talking to the Locked On Sens guys in regards to comparing Jack Hughes and Tim Stutzel, and they compared, like, you know, their first two years in the league or whatever the case might be. I was like, Yes, you are right about that. The numbers might be better. That's a tough comparison, too. That's a tough one. Yes, but the fact of the matter is this. Jack Hughes, this past year, in his junior year, his third year, he took his game to another level. Like, he was on on pace to get 90 or 100 so points had he played in more games. So Who's to say that cannot happen for Zegras? In his I'm, third I year. Didn't, I didn't, I mean, here's the thing. I didn't say it can't happen for Zegers, but I'm talking about in the okay. present moment, here, okay. right now. All right. I would go with – I'm going with Jack Hughes. I'm going with my guy to uh, be the better young gun just because of what he's been able to do. And quite honestly, he's, he's the truth. I call him the truth. I know that's Paul Pierce's nickname in sports, but I call him Jack the Truth. Hughes because he is the mother effing truth. Be Paul Pierce is going to come after you and well, probably who gives a, and probably I think give a crap about I don't give a crap about Paul Pierce. Who cares? He wasn't that he's overrated anyway. Now, um, Paul Pierce is going to he's going to come after you and then fake an injury and be carried off. <laughs> Very funny. But no. In all seriousness, Jack Hughes is is my guy just because of what he's been able to do for the organization yes he got off to a late start yes he as a first overall pick he had the worst um overall performance for a forward since joe thornton in the 90s 
or then Alexi Lafreniere came, but then that's a different discussion. That's a whole other thing. Yeah. Yeah. But so Jack Hughes is rookie year, not good. But then his sophomore year outside the Metro, no one was really talking about him, but he showed glimpses of significant improvement. And then his third year just took it five steps ahead. He just, he was on pace to get 90 or a hundred so points. I've seen the, I've seen how he makes the people around him better. He's still mm-hmm. able to get um, opportunities for himself. He's, and you know, he's right. proven that he's adaptable except being moved to a winger oh. position, which I don't know why Lindy Ruff decided to do that, but he wanted to keep like Nico Keisher, Jesper Brad and Jack. He was on the same line when he returned to injury that that wasn't going to work. Uh, and I'm glad that well. they only stuck with that for a couple games, but I'm um, digress digressing a little bit. Um, Jack okay. Hughes has proven that he can help others around him because, you know, look at what he was able to do for Yegor Sharangovich and Yanni Kwokinen, and now look what he's doing for Alexander Holtz right now because going into training camp, there was discussions as to whether or not Alexander Holtz would begin the year in Utica or not. But now Alexander Holtz is pretty much a lock to be the top six guy, and that's thanks to mostly Jack Hughes being able to make uh, you know, Alexander Holtz stand out a little bit more, and I think Jack has a chance. To win it. Look at this! Look at this tenacity right here. How can you not go with Trevor Ziegler? So of course, I'm going to go with my guy Trevor Ziegler. You know what? Okay, yeah, I know you are. I wouldn't expect anything less. But I, yep. but the facts are the facts. Jack Hughes, all, all the basically this year. The, the fact okay. of the matter is this: like, look. Okay, the fact the the facts are there for us, JD. I'm not trying to. Oh, to I, down I cannot Trevor wait. I cannot wait until Trevor okay. Zegers outscores his buddy this season because you know they're good buddies off the ice. They're yeah, I know. They're the, the battle. Of, I said battle of the bromance and okay, Cole Caulfield and Trevor Zegers, great friends. So let's talk about Zegers for a hot minute, shall we? Let's do that. You talk about a player okay. that makes his teammates better. I already mentioned Tony Milano. How about making guys like oh, you ready for this? Making guys like Derek Grant, a perennial fourth liner, better. Making other guys that are otherwise. I don't want to say. I, I literally said that with Yanni Kwokinen. Where's Yanni Kwokinen playing right now? Overseas. Where's Sonny Milano going to play right now? Sonny Milano is not having a good impression on the Flames. I think Milano does not make the Calgary team, and he's going to wind up probably in the American Hockey League. I think at that's least, where he might at, end up. At least he's in North America. Yanni at, is oh, my God. At no, least he's in North America. First of all, Kokonen could probably play in the AHL over here, too, for what it's worth. And why isn't he? Why isn't he? Because he chose to play in Europe. And maybe Milano... Hey, Milano could wind up playing in Europe, too. He could go the way of Sean Backman or Colton Yellowhorn. There are some names you don't know about. But let's talk about Milano making other guys better. A lot of that Ducks team was a hot mess for the past two seasons. I mean, come on. There's a lot of guys that are no longer on that team. He made Danton Heinen better. He made everybody around him better because he is that playmaker. He makes everybody on the junior's team better. I point out that Trevor Zegras also has a little bit of that instinct. There's a certain NBA player that also had that kill. Not that Jack Hughes doesn't, but who else will take on an entire country before a game, before a gold medal game, and pretty much tell them off and say, you know what? They haven't been tested yet. And we're going to win the gold. Zegras could have crap after the game, or he could have said it, you know, days before. But Zegras decided to give Canada bulletin board material. And he wound up scoring a point and winning the MVP of the WJC tournament that season. Because Trevor Zegras has that just panache with him. He has that little bit of moxie. That's what I think could separate Trevor Zegras from most other players. Is the killer instinct. Proving everyone else wrong. It's the mind... It's, I'm better than you, and and I'm going to prove you all wrong. I think Zegras is also going to, to prove a lot of the haters wrong. That say, oh, Zegras is a... F-. And there has been a lot of sports saying that he's a fluke. It's going to be that little bit of an edge that will propel Zegras. You ready for this? I think Zegras could have a monster season. He could get an 80-point campaign in his... Oh, what, what season? His season. Could it match... He's in his third season. I think he could surpass that total even. Okay. I okay. Really 
now that now that okay. Zegris will get the top six minutes, finally. Okay, for reference, JD, forty nine games. So through forty nine games that Zegris plays in, forty nine games that he suits up in, you expect for him to have fifty six points, at least. It could happen. Give given who he's around now, as opposed to last season, I could see it. Okay. All right, I'll hold you accountable for that. Becky, he, he's he's finally going to get top six minutes to start the okay. season. Thank we're talking, God. We're talking about create for himself and for others because Jack Hughes had 26 points. I mean, sorry, 26 goals and 30 assists for a grand total of 56 points. So that's the dictionary definition of you know for what? yourself and others. Somebody has to take over all those points that Getzloff had. Somebody has to take those over, right? Okay. Why not Trevor Zegras? Zegras finally being a first-line center will help. I'm just saying Jack Hughes was an all-star this past year, so that's also something you need to take into consideration because despite missing so many games, Jack Hughes an all-star, baby. I could say Trevor Zegras was technically an all-star. He was technically in the all-star festivities. No, no, let me rephrase. Let me rephrase that. He was technically in the all-star festivities. The Pacific Division is a pretty stacked division. And I'm sorry, Trevor, but Troy Terry did deserve it. I mean, I'm sorry to say that, but Troy Terry had a monster season. Now that we're going to see Terry and Zegras together on the line, it's going to be fun. It's going to be so, so fun to watch. I want to read you a quote. Oh, here we go. All right. What, what, what's the quote? Excuses are the tools of the weak and the incompetent used to build monuments of nothingness. Those who excel in it seldom excel in anything else but excuses. Oh, buddy. I'm just trying to say, like, you're making excuses for, for Trevor Zegras not being an all-star. Okay, but Jesper Bratt arguably was the best player for the New Jersey Devils. Oh, Once here I- we go. Oh, boy. I want you to talk to my buddy, the Brad Pack, because he always says Jesper Bratt is the best player in the NHL. Now, as I as I was saying, Jesper Bratt, theoretically, you can make an argument saying that he was the MVP for the New Jersey Devils last year. From a No, I game. disagree with that. I disagree with that. I'm sorry. He led, the, he led the Devils in assists. He led the Devils in points, but he was tied with Jack Hughes for most goals on a team. But yet, Jack Hughes was the person who, uh, if you take him off the roster, the Devils... I can't whistle. Go down. So and go. there we go. Thank you. Thank you for adding that sound bite. Now, as I was saying, you can make the argument that Jesper Bratt was the MVP, but the reason I picked Jack Hughes as my MVP is because who had the bigger impact winning wise? That was Jack Hughes. So despite despite Jesper Bratt having a better points um, season, Jack Hughes was still the all star and Jesper Bratt had to try to rely on the fan vote to get those last few spots, and he didn't get it. I, I'm sorry. No disrespect to, to Brat, but I think Jack Hughes is the engine that runs that team. No, I mean, I'm going to be honest here. Just like Trevor Zegras is starting is starting to be, become that player that will help lead the Ducks. When Trevor Zegras was, was off the ice, or those few he didn't play because of some panini happening... He the Ducks struggled. The Ducks struggled mightily without Trevor Zegras those few games. Yes, there's more of a sample size for Hughes missing games, but on the few times that Zegras was not on the ice, the Ducks just struggled so much. They struggled to score. They struggled to find any type of offense. So while more flashy player, and he does have the lacrosse goals, and he has the flying Z goal, he is still more of that playmaking type player. And you're going to see that in full force next season as well. Okay. Look, I'm not trying to say Trevor Zegras is bad or anything. He's a good player. And obviously, you know, he's going into year three. Jack Hughes is going into year four. I'm just mm-hmm. saying at the present moment, Jack Hughes is the better player, stats-wise, accolade-wise, all-star, uh, and just overall, you know, impact-wise. Because if you take Jack Hughes off that roster, Devils are right back in the lottery. Well, they, they were in the lottery this past year. They were in the lottery you know, anyway. Mo, no, but most, but Jack Hughes missed most of the year. He missed a good chunk of the year. So, and the Devils were dealing with a lot of injuries as well, and also the COVID did, didn't help them. So, 
So, and I know, I know, I know. Trevor Zegra game, point per game is in Trevor Zegras. I think he will get at least a point per game. Okay. Like I said, Trevor Zegras is a great player. I strongly disagree that he and Jack Hughes should both be rated in 87 in the Shell video game. I think Jack Hughes should be at least a point or two higher just because of what the, look what look the stats don't lie. Okay, stats do not lie. 49 games, 56 points, 75 games and uh a 61 points for uh Zegras if I if my memory's good. So, I'm just saying there's different levels to this. So almost the same amount of points. I think you need to look. You look. Look at the micro stats for NHL EA ratings too, though. There's there's got to be some micro stats that we're overlooking, right? Yeah, it's called being the cover athlete, so they kiss up to you a little bit more. It's called being the cover athlete. Freaking that's... right. <laughs> there's a reason he's a cover athlete. There's a reason for that. Yeah, it should be. Yeah, it, it. But you know, I get why they kiss up to him. They kiss up. Oh, they 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 pad his stats a little bit more, but I still die on the hill saying that Trevor Zegras wishes he was Jack Hughes. Why else? I... He did the stick toss in the air. He 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 copied his buddy. And Zegras got fined for it. Who did that first? Zegras got fined. I that still uh, that still gets to me that Hughes didn't get a fine, but Zegras got fined for that. What the heck, NHL? Let's let's please not become the NFL. Let's please not become the no fun league. All right. Let the players have fun. The no Let fun. the kids play. No. Yeah, I don't get. Well, it's possibly because I think the stick toss thing is just that it could potentially hurt someone. Like because you know it is like because you know the stick is kind of big. So if like if you toss it into the stands, it could like I think it's a safety hazard. So I don't. I think. I think the the NHL warned the players behind closed doors saying don't do that and then you know that's what happened. So I think they gave a warning to like Jack Hughes and then when Trevor Zegers did it he got fined. That's my educated guess. That's probably correct and that's so NHL to do that by the way. Do I do so I want to see the mic do I want to see the micro stats on this? Yes, I want to see what the shell stats are for Z's passing. I want to see what it is for his goal scoring. I want to see what it is for all those micro stats that could contribute to why he's an 87 as well as Hughes. And technically, uh, according to the list, he's rated just a tad bit higher. So it's like they're tied for 87, but who gets the slider edge? It's Trevor Zegers, apparently. So, you know, I, like I can't I said, wait to see why. Me neither. I, I, I am curious to see, too, because I did an episode on that saying, why are they both rated in 87? There's levels to this. There there are levels to this, and it has to do with the microstats. So let, let's see when the game... Yeah, let's delve into that when we finally get all those weird stats out, maybe. It's, it's the same game every year. We waste 60 bucks, And the soundtrack... I, maybe it's just because I'm not a music person, but I don't recognize any of those names. Oh, oh my God! Are you kidding me? I'm, I, that, I that's going to be a whole other podcast in itself. I don't, that, rec I don't recognize like every year for video game uh, soundtracks. Like I said, I'm not a music person, so it's just like I recognize fewer and fewer names. I will say the Legacy Edition on PS3 had some really, really good music back in 2016. And if I want to go back even further, I thought NBA Street Volume Three had some amazing soundtrack music as well when that when that came out. I mean, there was. There are some good ones there. But anyway, that's a whole other topic. <laughs> that's I'm just saying. So, JD, any final thoughts? Who are you rolling with in the Battle of the Young Guns? Who do you think I'm going to roll moment, with? The present moment, not future. The Trevor present Z. moment, Trevor Zegers. I'm rolling with I'm rolling with Z. All right, I'm going with Hughes. So, it looks like we're going to have to agree to disagree. We'll, we'll agree on this. Plus, I love I love Zegers trying to copy Hughes on that little stick toss into the crowd. Plus, that was a good goal too. I mean, okay, Hughes was good. I thought Zegers was better just because of who it was against. Who was Hughes' goal against? Mark Andre Fleury against the Chicago Blackhawks, who are not a good team, by the way. They're not a playoff team. Z did that against the Washington Capitals, a playoff team. What the retirement home capitals? 
<laughs> they were still a playoff team, right? I'm just saying. I'm just okay. saying. Okay. 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 Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. We'll, I don't... See, we'll see how the season goes, but I'm rocking with my guy, Jack Hughes, to possibly win the Hart Trophy. So uh, I think if you put $10 on that, you'll win like a few hundred dollars. The Hart Trophy. Really? I think Connor McDavid would want a word, and I think there's a couple other guys that would like a word. The narrative, the narrative. Jack Hughes has the narrative going for him. That's very important for any MVP race, the narrative. So not in the playoffs last year, injured. Then come come this you year, know what? has a Hall type of year. So, I can't wait to see the narrative on the Calder Trophy this season, which is another guy. I mean, there's the Calder narrative. I haven't gone there. Who was the runner up for the Calder last season? I don't think we have time for this. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. We're gonna stop right there. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna go any further. But at least one of our guys was in the top three trophy running. At least one of our guys. You know, what? I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop. Stop the count. Alexander Holt, look out. So. Oh, no, no, no. McTavish for the Calder. McTavish all the way. All the way. How do I get this? Okay, how do I get this? Point, Point the other way. I, okay, there we go. There we go. Okay, look look how easy this is. See, that's all you got to do. Look how easy that is. Sorry. You, you got you to gotta, you gotta work the camera, buddy. There's a figure I want to give you, but this is a family-friendly <laughs> show. So, as I was... Well, this since a family-friendly show, read between the lines. Anyway, oh. Yes. JD, real talk. Thank you for doing this crossover. Battle of the Young Guns. Where can everyone find you? They can find me keeping track of the real Young Gun, Trevor Zegris, on Lock Anaheim Ducks. I'm going to do this now. I'm going to do this now. You could track the runner-up for the Calder Trophy on Locked on Anaheim Ducks. It's free and available across all platforms this podcast, including Stitcher, Spotify, Odyssey. And I'll be talking about the eventual Calder Trophy winner, Mason McTavish. And I will continually pump his tires all season long on Spotify, on Odyssey, on Podbean. And I'll talk about the greatness that is Troy Terry on YouTube. And you could also follow me on Twitter at StimpyJD, right down there. And the show's Twitter's at L the the show's Twitter's at L O underscore ducks. Trey, it's always fun talking to you. And I can't believe we went a whole show not talking about certain someone. So we're gonna keep it at that for the show. Yep. And for anyone listening on the Anaheim Ducks kind of thing. You can follow my personal Twitter page at TreyMatt4, T-R-E-Y-M-A-T-T, and the number four. And the show's Twitter page at Locked On Devils, also doing a giveaway. So if you want to win a three by five uh, New Jersey Devils flag, all you have to do is leave a far- five-star rating on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, and you'll be entered. And also show me that you've done so, and you'll be entered to win that giveaway. Winner will be announced next Tuesday, so six days when this episode goes live. So, J.D., always nice talking to you. Always fun talking to you, and I can't wait till our two teams play each other. Can't wait for that. Woo! ESPN should have gotten on that, the Battle of the Bromance. Really? Come on, ESPN. What are you doing?